The views expressed in this podcast are solely those of the podcast host and guest and do not necessarily represent those of our distribution partners, supporting business relationships, or supported audience. Welcome to Transacting Value, where we talk about practical applications for instigating self-worth when dealing with each other and even within ourselves, where we foster a podcast listening experience that lets you hear the power of a value system for managing burnout, establishing boundaries, fostering community, and finding identity. My name is Josh Porthouse. I'm your host, and we are redefining sovereignty of character. This is why values still hold value. This is Transacting Value. You got to get in tune with you, the creator, the universe, because we have to understand what we put out in the universe will come back to us. Today on Transacting Value, what is it about ownership and acceptance that makes it difficult to actually own and accept who we are? It's easy to say from one perspective about somebody else to get into a relationship and understand and own all of them and their flaws. but. What happens when it's about you? Today's conversation, we're talking to Tavana Elliott, all about her career, her life, and how she does it. So without further ado, I'm Porter, I'm your host, and this is Transacting Value. Tavana, how you doing? I'm blessed, Josh. How are you, my love? I'm doing well. And again, I appreciate you giving some time in the afternoon, I think. You're in Central Time, right? Yeah, I am. So it's afternoon here. It's nice and sunny. You know, I know it's raining in some areas, but it's sunny here. So I just want to say thank you, though, for this time and opportunity. Absolutely. And especially then on a sunny day when you could be outside doing anything else. I appreciate your time. But you've got a pretty wild career path, I think, because it seems unconventional. It seems almost undervalued, I think. And, And we'll get there in a second. So let me start here. For everybody who's new to the show, and obviously everybody who can't see you right now, let's just start at the beginning, all right? Who are you? Where are you from? What sort of things have shaped your perspective? So I am Tavana Elliott, also known as Lady V, and I am a spiritual release coach, Mm. meaning that I actually am the person who actually digs deep. I mean, I go to the all the way to the bottom of the barrel, you know, and dig in the sticky stuff that people don't like to take and pull out. So that's what I do. And Mm. I help you actually release those things and those old baggage, old narratives, old limiting beliefs. I help you do that and roar in your greatness. And I'm from actually Kansas, Wichita, Kansas. And so for me, I was molested at eight. Oh. I've been in abusive relationships, abusive relationships. That's because I didn't know me. I didn't know how to accept me because I had a lot of limited beliefs. And people kept telling me about my non-worth, my non-value. So with that, I had to take my triumph and I had to turn it into my power. Okay. And so that's what I've done. I've taken my hurt and my pain. I found my freedom in it. And then I've learned how to shatter the silence because I don't want to break the silence because we can break the silence all day, you know, but we can also put it back together. It might not be as pretty or, you know, as put back together as it was, but it's still available to do. Instead, I didn't want to break it anymore. I wanted to shatter the silence completely. I wanted to stand up. I wanted to roar in my greatness, meaning that I am awakening the rebel that's within inside of me. And I am roaring and letting people know that, hey, it is okay. You will be okay. You don't have to live in your hurt, in your pain anymore. That it's up to you. You have the power to give yourself permission to come on out and awaken the rebel that's inside of you. And this is your time. Mm. So that's who I am in a nutshell. Mm. And, you know, my journey is to make sure that I help one individual at a time. I empower and transform your life. One person, one book, one story at a time. Well, when you say acceptance, I feel like that's a spectrum 
You know what I mean? It, you've, it's like a sliding scale of I'm pretty complacent sitting here, you know, wherever in my rocking chair or on the porch or, or whatever, dealing with my own guilt or trauma, whatever it is. That's mm-hmm. acceptance. It's futile, but it's acceptance, right? And then on the other hand, you're talking about this, this roaring into greatness phrase and concept of, I guess, ownership would be the opposite of that. And so how do you work along that scale? Or do you always aim for the, the high end? No, we always want to go to the high end. We want to aim for the high end, you know what I'm saying? Which is roaring in your greatness. And let me just break that down. Uh, when I say roar in your greatness, roaring means to first we're going to release. That's your first thing. Because okay. in order to grow, in order to find your freedom, in order to find your peace, you got to break. You can't grow until you break. And that's why we go until the sticky, the bottom of the barrel, because that's where really all the underlying trauma and all the hurt and the pain that we actually hold on to that goes throughout our life. And we don't realize that we're actually holding on to it, but we are. And until we let it go, you can't find your freedom. You can't find your your passion, your purpose. You can't find these things with inside of you. And so we have to learn how to release those things that's holding us back. Release those limited beliefs. They told me that I wasn't enough. They told me that I wasn't worthy. I was told that nobody would ever listen to my story. I was told that nobody would want to hear my story, that nobody would ever want to be with me. I was in white feet material. I heard it all. But here I am mm. on transactive listening. People are listening to my story. So I had to break that limited belief. Yeah. You had to know that I am worthy. And so that's what I had to do first was release. Can I, real quick to that point, that isn't like you woke up on Tuesday after falling asleep on Monday and figured I'm worthy now. That's like a deep seated acceptance. I don't know a better word for it. So once you get through with the next couple letters, can you also touch on that? What does that even mean? What does that look like? I will. Okay. And that's what the next few letters is going to help you to get to that part, okay. to know what that is. And so then after we do that, we have to overcome, mm. which means that overcome the obstacles that are standing in your way. If you don't overcome those obstacles, which means that you don't know who you are, you don't know what you will accept and what you won't accept. You don't know what you like and what you don't like. And that's a lot of our problems is we don't know us. We don't know who we are. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If you would have asked me two, three, four years ago who Tavana was or who Lady V was, I'd have just been looking at you like, well, and I'd have gave you a generic answer just to say that I said something. Yeah. But I couldn't really tell you who I was because I had no idea. And a lot of times we have no idea who we are. And it doesn't matter what your age range is. Some people are 60 and 70 and they still don't know who they are. They don't know what they want to be and who they are. So we have to learn these things. And that's in our overcoming, which is in our rebuilding stage. Okay. And then once you start rebuilding who you are, now you start awakening. That means that you're awakening that little couple that's inside of you that's waiting to be free, waiting to know, waiting with ambition, waiting with purpose, because now you have clarity of who you are oh, and what it is that you are choosing to be in your greatness. Because my greatness isn't Josh's greatness and Josh's greatness isn't my greatness, but we're both great. Mm-hmm. And we now know who we are. But before... Before the rebuilding stage, we had no idea. So we had to rebuild that. We had to unlearn to relearn. Mm -hmm. And once we relearned our values, our values, not what was instilled in us, but our values, because sometimes we have to break generational curses too, because people told us, this is who you are. Absolutely. This is what you're going to be. This is what you got to be. This is what you better be. We have to start knowing who we are because we're not all those people. And sometimes we're trying to live up to someone else's expectations 
that we lose us in the mix of it. So you have to unlearn to relearn. And that's in your rebuilding stage. That's in your overcoming stage. Once you do that, boom, now it's time to awaken the rebel within. Now it's time to say, hey, I know who I am. I know that I can be great. I know that this this person right here was waiting to just bust out and bust what they say. I feel like busting loose. Uh Uh-huh. And that's what awakening the rebel is, because now you know who you are and you you're like, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to be that because now you know what you will accept, what you won't accept, who you are, who you're not, what you do like, what you don't like. You know, you know these things now and you're always going to learn throughout your process. I don't want you to ever think that the learning process is over because it's not even in my rebranding stage, which is that's your rise stage. Now I am rising to the occasion of my greatness. I am now shattered the silence. I know who I am. I know what I want. And now I am stepping out of my comfort zone, which means that I am rising to my full potential. I am no longer sitting down here saying, well, I might be worthy I don't know. No, I know that I'm worthy. I know that I'm enough. I am confident in me. Why? Because I unlearned those limited beliefs to relearn the beliefs that I now know now of who I am. And I stick to it, which means that now I roar in my greatness. I roar in my confidence. I roar in my power. Because I had to release those things. Alrighty, folks, sit tight and we'll be right back on Transacting Value. Have you noticed lately how empty everything is? Empty streets, empty stores, empty schools. But I'm trying to change these empty times by being full of gratitude. Gratitude means saying thanks to the garbage collector, the medical providers, and all those who are helping every day. Things may appear empty around us, but when we're filled with gratitude, nothing is completely empty inside us. Gratitude is in you. From PassItOn.com. Now I roar in my greatness. I roar in my confidence. I roar in my power because I had to release those things. Okay, but so then releasing... How do you do it? Where do you start? Like I said, you can't just wake up the next day and say, I'm over it. You know what I mean? What's the catalyst or what's the, is it a group of friends? Is it internal? What, how does that happen? So releasing is really an internal thing. And that's where I come in spiritually Okay. because you have to actually want. And what I've learned is once I got tired, okay. My grandmother used to have this phrase until you're tired. And when you're really tired, then you'll do something about it. Until then, you're just talking about it. You ain't really tired. You're just talking about what you think you're tired of. Mm -hmm. But when you get really tired of carrying the baggage, because let me tell you something. I lived in so many states and so many different cities, but I didn't realize that I was just running. And in my running, I was just taking the same baggage that I had been taking all along. It wasn't leaving me. I was just carrying it along the journey Mm -hmm. and it kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Once I got tired of carrying it, I had to make up in my mind. I had to give myself permission to let go. That's our hardest Uh, part. Yeah. To give ourselves permission for us. We give ourselves permission for everybody else because taking care of everybody else is easier than taking care of us. That's what our mind has told us. And so we tend to take care of other people because it's easier. It gives us a reason to do something. It's a reason to feel needed, a reason, whatever these reasons that we have, it's easier for us to do that. But why is it so hard for us to do the same thing that we do for others, for ourselves? Because we haven't given ourselves permission to yet. Mm. Because we've had so many limited beliefs that we were told we wasn't worthy enough. That's mine. 
know what I'm saying? Everybody's is different, but mine was, I wasn't worthy enough. So if I wasn't worthy enough, why would I step out in my power that I have no idea what it is? Because I'm not worthy to do that. And so I had to get tired of carrying that baggage. And I was like, you know what? I kept saying it and kept saying it. And one day I I was, I really just said, you know what? Today is the day that I have to figure out something new. I have to want it. I have to be consistent in it. And I have to do something, which means that I started taking measures, which was I found a coach. I found a therapist to help me along my journey. And I'm still in therapy to this day. I keep my therapy. I want you to know that therapy and coaching is very important. Don't be afraid to find somebody to talk to because it will help you along your journey when you don't know how to release it. Mm. Did you find that, I guess, one of two things, either in having a therapist, you ended up finding new friends or that initially you didn't need a therapist because you had really good friends. So I didn't have any friends. I realized that (laughs) I was my friend. And in that, I didn't find new friends. They found me. Really? Mm -hmm. I found me in my therapy because I wasn't doing it for my friend. I wasn't doing it to look for friends. I was doing it for me. Uh And in that, I found me. I was like, oh, there she is. Oh, my gosh. Okay, who are you, lady? Wait a minute. When I saw her, I didn't know who she was. I'm looking in the mirror and I have no idea of who this lady is looking back at. Mm, I get that. No, I. Yeah. And I had to relearn that. And therapy gave me some direction because I was hungry for it. And what I know is people do what they want to do. Say you want to go to that concert. You're going. Mm -hmm. You're going to find a way. You don't care. You're going to be there and you're not going to miss it because that's what you want to do. You want to go to that football or basketball game or you want to go get that new purse or them new pair of shoes or that new suit, whatever it may be. You're going to find a way to go get it. So guess what? I chose to also choose me the same way I choose everything else. I chose to choose me first, too, which means I decided to say, you know what? I'm going after it because I got to have a better life because this life I'm living right now, I am sick and tired of being on a hamster wheel Mm -hmm. of chaos, confusion, hurt, pain, anxiety, depression. I had all of that, all of it. And I went through it, even going through being a lupus advocate. I thought the world was over for me when they told me I had lupus. I thought I was dead because I didn't know me. I didn't know the power that lied inside of me. And that's the rebel. Mm. The rebel is your power. I don't want people to look at rebel as being a bad thing. The rebel is your power. I didn't know that that was inside of me because it had already been beaten out of me because of the trauma that I lived in from the molestation to the mental and emotional abuse of parents, loved ones, friends, all these different things and people that I encountered throughout my journey. And now I chose to choose me first. Mm. Decided that I no longer wanted to live there anymore. Mm. I no longer wanted to do that. And so, yes, it helped me to find me in my therapy. It was a direction. I had to do the work, though. Okay. Well, what does that look like, I guess, professionally? You're talking, well, for one, obviously lupus is physical, right? So there's a little bit of that aspect. But but your focus and your story so far sounds like you're not specifically orienting on physical considerations, like changing your nail polish to feel better or something more cosmetic or superficial. So let's write that off for a second. And you mentioned anxiety and depression and and these other mental faculties, right? So some of that. But you're also not saying, go take a walk, get more sunshine. You'll feel better about yourself in your day. So let's write off mental stuff. And so when you're saying spirituality, the first thing I thought was religion. And I'm sure that's a connotation you hear often. 
But they're, exactly. not, they're, they're not really the same, are they? Because you can take this into the workplace as an individual, the lessons and things you're talking about. You could take this into the workplace. You could take this into schools because it's the spirituality you're talking about. I'm not sure how to qualify it, but it's it's not a religion. It's it's the other stuff that's not physical and mental, right? Exactly. All righty, folks, sit tight. and We'll be right back on Transacting Value. Join us for Transacting Value, where we discuss practical applications of personal values every Monday at 9 a.m. on our website, transactingvaluepodcast.com, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. and Sundays at noon on wreathsacrossamerica.org slash radio. The spirituality you're talking about, I'm not sure how to qualify it, but it's it's not a religion. It's It's the other stuff that's not physical and mental, right? Exactly. It's a deeper... I call it the deep within. Okay. And when I say deep within, it's, it's an emotional feeling that you feel. And sometimes we can't always see it, but we can feel it. And it's a deeper than just the surface. Because on the surface, we only like to scrape the surface. We don't like to dig deeper. Sure. And so for me, it's going in there mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all wrapped into one Mm. because you have to have all of those to actually pull it out and actually say, okay, how do I heal? How do I heal? And each one of these parts of you have to heal because if they're not all healed, then you're not healed. (laughs) Sure. You're not healed. Okay. You know, if you don't heal your mental, but you healed your physical. And that's what I like to say. It's like being beat up on. People think that I'm in an abusive relationship because this was my aspect. And that's why I can only talk of what I've been through. I didn't know that I was in an abusive relationship because he wasn't or they wasn't beating me. They wasn't hitting me. I I didn't have black eyes and bruises. Okay. However, the bruises and the trauma that was sitting on my heart, that was sitting in me emotionally, that was sitting in me mentally, was trauma. And I didn't realize that was a sign of abuse, was emotional and mental abuse. And that right there is the worst abuse because we take that over and over and over. Whereas physical abuse, we can put on makeup. We can hide the marks. They'll eventually go away. We can hide that. But mental and emotional and spiritual abuse will always be with you. It carries through Day to day to day to day, it never goes away. And that is the part that you have to heal. So you have to take it all into count as one. So you got to heal your mental, which means that, okay, I got to do something to be mentally. I got to heal my emotion. That means I got to tap into these emotions that I really don't want to feel anymore. But in order to heal them, I got to tap into them. And so this is like my finding a place to fight your demons. You go to the gym, you go to the library. You go, this is what you mean? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then spiritually, yeah. you're saying, how do you? And then, and then spiritually, you don't have to, I don't want people to think that it's religion because it's not religion. Spiritual means that you are getting into with, with your creator. You are starting to be as one with who you are. And religion don't have anything to do with spirituality because God said we are his children. He didn't say that the Baptists and the Christians and the the Pentecostals and all these other people and the Catholic, I only love this group or I only love this group. No, he said he loves us all. And so once you realize that he loves you because you are created in his own image, he don't want you to be hurt. He don't want you to be traumatized. He don't want you to be in a dark place. He don't want you to be in a dark place. So how do you come to the light? That means you have to get one. You got to get in tune with you, the creator, the universe, because we have to understand what we put out in the universe will come back to us. Mm, Absolutely. So if you put out love, you will receive love. That's what I had to realize. Once I start putting out self-love, then I started to receive self-love. But I didn't know that. 
I had to learn that over time. And I had to learn what does self-love look like to me? Self-love looked like to me peace. I don't want to argue. I don't want to fight. I don't want to be in negativity. That's my peace. So I have to learn how to gain peace, which is a choice, which means that, guess what? Now I have to watch the people that I'm around, that I talk to, that I hang with, and I don't care who you are. If it's not aligning with my mission and my statement, I don't care who you are. I'm not in your circle. I'm not fooling with you like that. That don't mean that I don't love you. That just means that I'm not in your circle. We don't have to have no time. But that's tough because you're talking no. friends you've had for a while or or family. I mean, that could be I, anybody. So let me tell y'all something. In my journey, this is my shattering my silence and stepping out of my comfort zone. You say it's tough and it could be tough because a lot of times mentally, we don't want to let go of things that hurt us because they're family, mm. they're friends. We love them. We this and we that. Well, I had to understand that at the end of the day, I love me too. I love me too. And that does not mean that I have to continue to take your toxicity to love you or me. And so if that means that I have to love you with the long handle spoon and love you from a distance, <laughs> That's what I would do, sir. You stand over there. I'm going to stand over here and I'm okay with it. And I say that because at the end of the day, I love all of my family. I am a family oriented person. I am. But I cut my mama off. And this is just real. Mm. I had to let her go. Not that I don't love her. It's just the fact that we can't keep being toxic to each other. It's not fair. I don't want to live like that anymore. And that's my choice. It's my choice if I stay there too. Yeah. And whatever mm -hmm. I receive, I receive. And I have to take that because I chose to stay. Well, I am choosing me first too. The same way she chooses her. I'm choosing me. And I'm choosing to not be in any more toxic relationship. It doesn't matter if it's with my parents. It doesn't matter if it's with my friends. It doesn't matter if it's with my soulmate or my mate or whoever he may be in the world that's looking for me. I don't care. I'm letting you know in advance right here when you listen to this, if you're watching. <laughs> I'm not going to take your bull just because I love you. Or just because I feel like I need you to love me. Like, I love me enough. And because if you can't love me the way God loved me, I don't want your love. I'm cool on it. Thank you. Because that is unconditional love. And that's how I had to learn how to love me. And so once I learned how to love me unconditionally, now I can teach you how to love me unconditionally, too. I can teach others that I come into a counter with how to love me because this is what I will accept. Mm -hmm. And this is what I won't accept. Boundaries. I've got that. I know that because I figured out me. I rebuild it who I am, me. And I now know my self-love. So when I put my self-love out there, my self-love comes back to me tenfold. Mm. And that's why I can smile. And that's why I can be free. And that's why I can be authentically me because I went through the steps to unlearn, to relearn who I was. Mm. That's empowering in and of itself. That presence is contagious. Maybe not common, but spreads. And there's a phrase that I use with a lot of people I work with that confidence breeds competence. And I think in certain circumstances, it can go both ways. It's almost reciprocal, but the more confident you are, more like your rebranding phase, the easier it is for people to understand you. There's, like you said, more clarity in your purpose. And so other people's competency of you and who you are increases based on your confidence. However, the more you understand yourself, the more you're able to learn and grasp and set boundaries and parameters to qualify who you want to be, the more confidence you build. And there's an important distinction that you mentioned. You didn't realize these things until you stopped to listen. And what that sounds to me like, it was natural. It was innate. 
It was the stuff that was influenced, but not reinterpreted by things and people and, and circumstances around you. And so how do you recommend stopping for a second, for a minute, for a day, for a week, for a period of time to think about what comes naturally to me? Where do I naturally find myself? In which circumstances do I naturally feel more confident or more in tune and aligned? You just ask yourself these questions and consciously think of the answer, or is there a, a formula to do this? Make lists. A list. And that's what I teach in my course. Yes, I make lists. Mm -hmm. And so the first list that I would tell you to do is make a list 50 to 100 things of things that you like. Okay. Things that you like. Just anything. And then on the other side, I want you to make a list of the things that you could let go in your life. Out of that list? Mm hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you start realizing that in this list, you're going to start realizing what's important to you. Oh, I see. Okay. So make lists. You know, I keep a list. I keep my list over here. It's always changing. Okay. As I grow in my journey, my list change. So I keep doing them. Because my values change, my perspective change, my mindset is changing. Because you're going to change throughout your journey because you're going to grow. Sure. And if you're not growing, you ain't changing. Believe that. You just <laughs> stuck and stagnant where you at and you are complacent and comfortable where you're at. And that's OK, too, if that's where you choose to be. You know what I'm saying? But you can't be mad at others that's around you mm. that's and growing in their greatness That's it. and leaving you behind. That's it. You chose. Because, exactly. Because yep. that's a choice. And you have to remember, I had to understand that everybody could not go where I was going to go. Everybody is not able to go. If we were all going to be great or fabulous or whatever, we would all be robots. You know, we would all be the same. Mm -hmm. But we all, everybody can't be entrepreneurs. They're not all for that. Everybody can't be a podcaster. They're not all for that. We all have our individual talents. We all have our individual gifts that we hold. The thing is, what's yours? Mm. What's yours? And in these things, you'll start learning who you are. You'll start valuing, you know what? I realized that, wow, this ain't really, I like it, but I don't love it. Right. Something that I really can keep or is it something I really can let go? Because the thing, you know, and, and we'll start noticing these things as you grow in your greatness. You'll start figuring these things out. What's important to you? You might have liked avocado today <laughs> and tomorrow you taste it and be like, you know what? It's all right, but mm, I can live without it. That's what we're talking about. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, simple things. it's not rocket science. It's just simple things. But we make it complicated because we are complicated people. All right, folks, sit tight. And we'll be right back on Transacting Value. What do entrepreneurs and working professionals, organizations or teams and aspiring authors have in common? They all get ignited to become empowered storytellers with Elliot Knight Professionals. Awaken your rebel within and learn how to release, rebuild, and rebrand your voice for corporate, professional, or personal branding. Think you're ready to release limiting beliefs, share your authentic story, and achieve transformative growth? Challenge your mettle with the Awaken Your Rebel course from Elliot Knight Professionals. Authenticity, creativity, integrity, and compassion guide every interaction and Ensure that Elliot Knight Professionals helps individuals not just reach their goals, but that they do so with confidence. Tell your story. Redefine your brand. Contact Elliot Knight Professionals online at ElliotKnightProfessionals.com or on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook for more information. Elliot Knight Professionals. Empower your story. Transform your life rocket science. It's just simple things, but we make it complicated because we are complicated people. Okay. Let me push back. I think we make it complicated because we are complex 
And so there's so many different intricacies and influences, I think, that involve how we view everything, let alone ourselves. Just naturally, you know, growing up and experiencing life as we go. So I'm curious. This is a segment of the show called Developing Developing Character. Character. Developing Developing Character. character. And so for anybody new, and obviously you included, it's only two questions. As vulnerable as you want the answers to be, totally up to you. But the only thing, in my personal opinion, that's a constant from when we're kids to when we're picking age as adults is that we make decisions rooted in a value system. And witting or unwitting is sort of irrelevant to the point. But everything you just described first required you to stop and consider you in the present based off of you in the past. So let me start there with my first question. As far as values are concerned, what were some of the values that you remember maybe being taught as a kid or growing up around or just happened to sort of suck in as you were going through life? The one value that my grandmother really instilled into me was treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm. She always told me that no matter what you do, if you don't want to be treated like that, don't go around here treating people and bullying people and thinking that you will, because it will come back to you, Mm. you know? And then my next value was be mindful of how you move out here because karma will bite you in the ass. (laughs) If you think it won't, wait for it. It will. Uh And so those were the two things that I really took and I really value. And so again, like you said, it went with me in my adult, even in my journey now, and more so now than it was before. Because now I'm on this journey and this mission to follow and be right because I'm trying to go to, I'm trying to go to a greater place. And when I get there, I want him to say, check, well done. I don't want him to be looking in the book like, well, <laughs> you know, back in 2024, you know, you were, uh, yeah, you were treating X, Y, and Z. Like, I don't want that. You know, I want him to say job well done because you actually did, even though you were hell on wheels, Yeah, you came out of that and you still kept those same values to treat people with kindness, to treat people with respect. To give love, even when love isn't being given back to you, to still do that because I am love. You are love. You are created in my image. So that's where I do. That's where I'm at because that's how I was raised. And I think sometimes we maybe hold people to sort of an unfair standard. Like we want people, like you said, to love and respect us whoever we are as people at whatever age, that doesn't matter, but to love and respect us and to say, For example, I just met you. I want you to treat me this way, right? Why? Who are you to treat me that way? What reason have I given you? How do you, you don't even know me, right? But I know me and I'm not even loving or respecting myself. So how can I expect anybody else to do it, even if that's what I want? And I I think that's a, that's a delicate balance to roll through. But so to that point, now let me talk to the older you, more present, what's changed? You've talked to all these people, you've learned all these things about the world, about yourself, and you've aged and changed and grown. What are some of your values now? Well, my values is to love me. Mm. My values is to know that I'm worthy and that I'm more than enough and that it's okay to be okay with it. And it's okay to let people think and feel the way they want to think and feel about you. It doesn't make it true. You know what I'm saying? Even though some things is true and sometimes we need to listen. Yeah. But, you know, there are some things that, hey, I can't tell. I'm not going to say that I'm not a great person or that, you know, I have my flaws and I've accepted my flaw. And sometimes we don't accept our flaws because we want to believe that we're perfect and we're not. We're flawed all the way. And I'm flawed. But even in my flaws, I'm perfect in my imperfections. Mm. And that's the ownership and acceptance you were talking about earlier. Exactly. All right. Digging it. So then if all of these things now you've made peace with and have sort of made the the mosaic that is you, what now, I guess, for everybody else? Here, here's my thought. Social media, for example, has no prerequisite course, has no 
requirements to inform people of know thyself before you know other people on social media 101 books for dummies you know it doesn't exist but now present day everything that's digitized as far as sociology is concerned through social media everything that's digitized is exactly the same as if we were in person the difference is now you've got the world giving you social feedback instead of one person in your home your neighborhood your school your church or whatever so how do we convey some of these deeper topics to kids? And I guess in the last couple of minutes, that, that may be one of my last questions, but how do we convey some of that stuff to other people? Adults is one thing. You said 50s, 60s, 70s. That's obviously another thing, right? Degrees of maturity vary here and there, but, but it's still totally different from under 20 years old. And they're the ones that are receiving feedback from the rest of the world because everybody else, generally speaking, is saying, I really don't care as much. I'm learning to make peace. So how do we advise? How do we empower? How do we develop the roar? Working with kids and young adults, I'm glad that you asked that. And so that's kind of my thing, too, is I get the opportunity to mentor and to work with youth. And so in my mentorship, they teach me a lot about me, too. I bet. Yeah. And we have to be willing to listen to our children because, baby, these are this, this new generation, woo, baby, they is definitely not the same as when we were growing up and coming up. This is they are 10 times smarter, wiser. They're ready. They come out ready, mm -hmm. you know. And so you have to just be willing to listen, but they are willing to listen to us. But one thing that I love about these kids is they ain't accepting just anything we saying. No, there's a challenge They're almost not. all the time. Yeah, they are challenging us like nobody's business. And I love it because that keeps me, I always say it keeps me on my toes. You know, you talk about being on your toes, baby, start talking to these this new generation. They're going to keep you on your toes because they ask real questions. Mm-hmm. And they want to know. And they can sense bull a mile away. And you ain't pulling no, nothing over their eyes because they're going to rebuttal and give you another rebuttal and give you another rebuttal. Like they <laughs> pull a cup out of you. So we just have to know and be mindful of how we do and listen to them the way they're listening to us. But make sure that we're giving them hope. Hope. Because that's what they're missing. And that's what they're wanting because we got so much hate and chaos and drama and foolishness around here. They're missing hope. Mm -hmm. And all they want to know is that they have a chance to be great too. And so if we just give them that one thing and let them know that they are worthy, they are more than enough and they can be anything they want to be. We got to stop just because we wasn't, we got to stop crapping on their dreams. You know, if, just because we wasn't don't mean that they can't be. And so we just have to keep giving them hope. And I noticed that as long as I continue to put hope into them, they go to school, they try a little bit harder. The teachers even have told me, hey, I don't know what you're doing to these kids, but man, I've noticed that even their grades are starting to go up a little bit. You know, they're being more attentive. They're being more, you know, a little bit better, like, I've been asking their parents to do this and they always mention your name. So we know that it's coming from somewhere. Yeah. And that's what is me. Kids will brag on you. You don't even have to be in the room and they will brag on you. If you are providing the one thing that they need, love and hope. Mm. If you can't be honest with you, you sure can't be honest with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, for anybody else that I was I was actually going to ask you what all of this has done for your sense of self and self-worth, but it is pretty apparent a lot. Actually, you seem so and again, I haven't even met you in person, but you seem so authentic and genuine and happy in that, not like pushy in that, you know, and content, but not complacent, peaceful but not lazy, you know, it, like, I'm not even going to ask you what it's done for your self-worth is the point I'm getting at. I, like I said, it's contagious. Even your presence digitally 
your passion, your, your understanding for yourself digitally carries through. And I think that's important too, because what we talk about all the time is, or what we even hear all the time, is in person is always different than online. And there's a lot of reasons it is. I understand that. But there are some reasons where it's not, some ways where it's not. And this is one of them. So I guess, first off, absolutely don't go back towards old you because new you well, is... I know where it is. at that address. Oh, like, man. That, that I know where it is Yeah, and everything, but I don't reside there. I don't reside there at all. And I have no, I don't even look at the address when I drive by it. I just keep on pushing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, Tavana, for anybody that wants to get in touch with you, follow along, see any other podcast or anything, where do people go? How do they get in touch with you? So you can find me at www.linktree, Lady V E N P. So that's Elliot Knight Professionals, EMP. And that's where you can find everything you need to know about me, everything that I'm doing, all my social medias and handles, all the podcasts that I'll be on and that I'm doing as well. You'll be able to get on my calendar as well if you want to do that because you have made the decision to roar in your greatness. And hey, it costs you nothing but your time to get a consultation with me, to find out what we can do and how we can do that because I want to help you and I want to hold your hand to do that. And so please get on my schedule, www.linktree, Lady V E N P is where you can find me. Man, I love what you're doing. I love your message, your presence. Every I love it. I'm all about it. For anybody who's new to the show, depending on the player you're streaming this conversation on, you can click see more, you can click show more. And in the description, the drop down for this conversation, you'll see the link to Devana's link tree and you'll be able to jump in there as well and find all the links while you're listening to this conversation. You can browse her social. And when you find her, you know exactly what I'm talking about. She's the real deal. So Devana, this was great. I love the opportunity. Again, thank you for your time and your attention and your insight coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And I think it's easy for me to say on behalf of everybody listening to the conversation that they did as well. So thank you for you. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to share my story and my insight. Hey, I just want to tell everybody that no matter what you're going through, no matter what it looked like, know that you're worthy. Know that you are more than enough. And Lady V loves you. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in, listening to our conversation, listening to the show. Obviously, if you want to be on the show, if you want to find more of our conversations, if you want to track down any of the other material we're putting out, head over to transactingvaluepodcast.com. You can find everything there on the website, including our social links, which obviously will take you over to Tavana's as well in the description for this conversation. Guys, thank you again. And until next time, that was Transacting Value. Thank you to our show partners and folks. Thank you for tuning in and appreciating our value as we all grow through life together. To check out our other conversations or even to contribute through feedback, follows, time, money, or talent, and to let us know what you think of the show, please leave a review on our website, transactingvaluepodcast.com. We also stream new episodes every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time through all of your favorite podcasting platforms like Spotify, iHeart, and TuneIn. You can now hear Transacting Value on Reads Across America Radio Eastern Standard Time, Wednesdays at 5 p.m., Sundays at noon, and Thursdays at 1 a.m. Head to readsacrossamerica.org slash transacting value to sponsor a wreath and remember, honor, and teach the value of freedom for future generations. On behalf of our team and our global ambassadors, as you all strive to establish clarity and purpose, ensure social tranquility, and secure the blessings of liberty or individual sovereignty of character for yourselves and your posterity, we will continue instigating self-worth and we'll meet you there. Until next time. That was transacting value.